Kia ora and welcome to my Blender tutorial. In this series we're going to go through a really simple modelling tutorial. Hopefully you've gone through some of the previous modelling tutorials and you have an idea of how to use Blender and object mode. In this one we're going to take a step forward and go into edit mode and start working with the vertices, edges and faces that make up your models. Um, in this one we're going to make the same at all that you see rotating in front of you right now. Um, it's a really beautiful shape and it's very kiwi so uh, let's get to it. So before we start making a model, we're going to look for some reference images. So I've, I've searched for a Mata on, the, on Google and um, I see there's a whole bunch of different adverts um, and images that we can use. And um, what I'm going to do so that we can all uh, kind of follow along, you're welcome to take a different image if you can download. Um, but if not, you can follow along with me. I just went to uh, Wikipedia um, in here and there's a, a nice image um, that I can see on this right hand side, which looks like it'll be fun. So I'm going to open up this image. Um, as always, if you're going to take an image, just make sure you're allowed to take this image. And um, I can see down here it's by Skyring, but it's a Creative Commons um, share alike. So I should be able to take this and I'll put a reference to um, Skyring in the uh, in the video description. So I'm just going to save, uh, save that image. Just um, put it on my desktop, I reckon, for now. And... Uh, just copy that over and hit save and uh, then we'll get into Blender and start modelling. Alright, so I've just got Blender open now and uh, what we're going to do is just drag and drop the image straight into Blender. Now I'm going to just press 1 on my number pad um, and that's going to make the uh, make it go to front view. I'm just going to take this image uh, that I put on my desktop and just drop it straight in. Um, it's quite cool uh, that you can do that now. It used to be a bit of a, a pain to set up but you can just drag the yellow lines on the outside to resize and the square and the, the little cross in the middle to kind of reposition it. I'm just going to get it approximate. I'm going to put it in the middle um, and we'll use that as our reference image to be able to um, model with. So the image is um, a, a single plane that just sort of sits um, in our scene. And when we're in the front view, um, it's kind of like a 2D version. And it's kind of mo mostly what we're going to use. Um, what I'm going to do, however, is just, um, just move it back. So I have it selected. I'm just going to press G, press Y, and uh, move it back away from, a, the, um, yeah, away from the cube. And then press number one and number pad so we're ready to get started. So I've got the cube selected in the center there and I'm just going to jump to the modeling tab and that will jump us into edit mode on this cube. Um, what we're going to do is I'm just going to start with a single point. I'm going to show you how we can build up a shape from individual vertices. So um, I'm going to press M on the, um, on the keyboard just uh, to have all of these vertices selected um, of this cube and then press uh, merge at center. So what that's ended up doing is just creating a single point that we're going to um, move and extrude to create um, some shapes. I'll just quickly show you how that works. So if I press G to grab, you can see that this orange uh, dot is my, um, my first vertex. I'm just going to click and uh, when I'm happy with the move, click to where I want it to be. And then I'm going to press E to extrude. What that does is it actually creates um, a, an edge between those two vertices. And I'm just going to keep clicking E as I go around the shape. Now the last two points to join them up is the toughest part. So what we need to do is just press uh, shift and left click on the first point. And with the other one selected, we can just press F and that will fill that with an edge because it's two vertices. It's going to fill that with an edge. And um, what we've ended up creating here is just basically an outline. We've uh, sketched this outline of the shape that we want. And then we cross our fingers and we hope because what we're going to do is we're just going to press A to select everything inside of this, um, all of these vertices. And then I'm going to press Alt and F. 
And that should, in theory, uh, do a beautify fill, it's called, which means it's going to fill as best it can the uh, shape that I've created. And that's worked really well for me. It may or may not work for you. You may need to adjust a few vertices if they're too close or, or just try again. It didn't take long to make. But this beautify fill just creates triangles out of all of the vertices and tries to make sure that it gets the best possible shape. So we've managed to go from um, a single vertex up to um, edges and then we've made faces and that's the basics of every single 3D model is the vertices make uh, edges and joined with edges and the edges are combined together to make faces. So um, it's still uh, sadly very very flat. So um, with everything selected I'm just going to extrude that out um, and what I could do is um, I'm going to extrude it just a little so that we have a completely solid uh, object, a 3D object, and you'll see it's still really blocky. And what I'm going to do, because because um, I'm lazy, is rather than try and smooth this out with bevels in certain places, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a modifier. So the in the modeling tab, the modifier um, comes up by default, but if you can't find it, if you've clicked something else, it's down by the spanner. Um, when you do that, we click add modifier. The modifier we're looking for is this subdivision surface, which automatically subdivides the model into a uh, into a smoother shape and you can see that it's done a reasonable job. The mesh stays on the outside um, so and um, what you can actually do is you can still change this and it will uh, be deformed inside based on the modifier and what I'm going to do because I've got a reasonable computer is I'm going to just uh, bump this uh, levels up so I get a little bit of a smoother result for my um, hemato and uh, I'm just going to also smooth um, make it shade smooth because we can still see all of the faces in here so just right click and shade smooth and you should see you've ended up with a fairly cool result um, with very little effort and that's the basics of 3D modeling you've got the edges and vertices and faces and you can adjust them um, as much as you like to create the shapes that you want the last thing I'm going to do in this super quick tutorial is um, just go back into uh, press tab there to go into object mode. Just going to delete the background. Um, this thing's still uh, round about the middle, so I'm just going to um, grab it on the Z, move it up to a position that I feel um, it's round about the middle. I've still got a camera, so if I press zero, I can see that uh, I'm viewing this from the camera. Um, even if I change this viewport mode to the to the rendered mode you'll see it's still this horrible grey so we're just going to um, make a new material for it and maybe add a few more lights so we get a reasonable looking render um, rather than this horrible grey colour. So to add the material to this object we just go down to the materials over here and um, if you wanted to continue with all of these different um, tabs this is the normal procedure for creating a, a game model or any type of model as you would go to sculpting then UV editing then texture painting but we're going to shortcut a few of them and not do any of those while we get to this shading tab um, the shading tab is how the material is set up um, the material right here can um, have this base color uh, this uh, white if you click on the white you can change the base color to any color that you want and I'm just going to make it like a dark green um, like you saw the Ponamu stone um, to be um, it's going to be a little bit more uniform than it probably should be it'll be all the same color of green um, but it still looks pretty nice I think the last thing I'm going to do is uh, just move on to this next tab, this animation tab. We're going to add um, a few more lights to light the scene a little bit more. So these are these are just the default lights. I'm just going to shift D to um, duplicate the light and just move one um, over by the camera and one in behind. And I'm just orbiting around as I do this and pressing G to kind of move them around. So usually you'll have a light uh, more or less behind the, and this is usually the most powerful light, the backlight, um, but I've just put a few lights around to see what the render looks like on this particular frame. I can press F12 and it'll render the um, render the image. So the, the lighting's made a big difference to how this looks. And I think what we'll also do, if I close that one, if I, what we'll also do is just maybe add a really, really simple animation so that this, uh, this thing spins around. So we'll just go into that. So to, to animate this, I'm just going to use a simple um, rotation animation. Um, so I've selected the model, 
just press 7 on my number pad to view it from the top and just press I to insert a keyframe because I'm, I'm going to store the rotation um, as it currently is um, for this model at this frame. So you can see down here that frame 1, it's stored the, it's called the cube weirdly, but um, it's we've stored the rotation um, at this position and all I'm going to do is I'm going to go forward um, maybe 10 frames uh, press R and hold control so R to rotate I'm going to hold control and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and then I'm going to press I to insert the rotation again for that keyframe so by scrubbing backwards and forwards you see we've made a very very simple animation of the position at frame 1 and the position at frame 10 I'm going to move to frame 20 now press R again and do another 90 degrees with control held if you hold control you get a very um, you get st stepped animations rather than um, very fine grained animation, uh, sorry, rotations where you might get this wrong. So I'm just going to insert that keyframe as well. So that's another one. And then we go to the next one. Same thing. Rotate 90 more degrees. Press I. Insert rotation. And then the last one is up to frame 40. And this should be all the way back to where we started and press I and insert rotation. So um, this now in theory should be uh, rotating. Uh, if we go back to our uh, camera view and we hit play, you'll see that um, it rotates beyond the number of animations that we've made. And we need to, the reason for that is because we've actually only got these 40 animations, but we've got actually 250 set up already. Um, you can change this down here where it says start and end. So it starts at one and we want this to end at frame 40. So um, we don't show that very right on that last animation. So I'll cycle back around to this one. So hit and play, you can see that we've got this nice rotation all the way around um, from our 3D model. So real quickly, just to render this out to the final movie, if we jump across the rendering, this is the last image that um, I rendered that you can see right here. We've not got the whole animation yet. Um, this is some of the render settings and you can um, look at some of the help for each of those. You can enable them or disable them as much as you want. Um, the I mean, I'll leave these all as kind of the defaults um, just because it will be quicker. Um, but please feel free to come back and play with the settings to see if you want to get motion blur or a little bit of glow and bloom. Um, the uh, output uh, tab is the one below, the one that's enabled by default inside of the rendering tab. Um, this is the output that I expect and the location that I need to do. So to export this, we just need to go through these from the top to the bottom to make sure that everything's set correctly. So this is the resolution, obviously. This is a full HD resolution. And because I'm, again, lazy, I'm going to set this to 50% of full HD because I don't need a, a full HD res um, render. It'll just take longer to do than the standard. I'm going to leave this default frame rate. The start and end frames are set correctly because we set them down here. It's matching that, that point. Um, the output is the key one, and um, this is the location and name of the file and type of the file that you would the, the file will be when it's finally finished. So um, I'm going to set this uh, file format. PNG is a single flat image, so if you did hit the an render the animations, it would just render a whole lot of PNGs one after the other. Um, so I don't want that. I do want a movie format. So I'm just going to say that I want the um, the FFmpeg video. Uh, the encoding for the FFmpeg video is like you would get with um, with YouTube. So this is the H.264 encoding that you see with, with the FFmpeg videos. The next important thing is the output location. So currently it's in the temp directory right now. So I'm, again, I'm just going to hit the uh, little folder there. I'm going to find, um, find my desktop again. And... Um, I'm just going to give this a file name of um, my movie and accept that. So it will automatically put the file extension that's required on top of that um, by default. So once that's all set up, um, everything is ready to go. In order to render the movie, we just need to go up to render 
and then choose render animation. And then every frame will be rendered one after the other by your high speed GPU. And the movie will be made um, and put in the location that you've told it with the name that you told it. So mine's is done. I'm just going to quickly check that it's worked. So as you can see, the uh, movie um, was on my desktop, it's finally finished and you can see the animation from the model that we created. Hopefully if you enjoyed this tutorial and you've got a little bit more into um, edit mode, uh, which is super important for making the shapes that you need inside of Blender. There's a heap more tutorials online, so please uh, stick with the Blender modeling. It takes around about 100 hours to get any good at Blender and to start feeling like you uh, understand how to make things out, out uh, from scratch without tutorials. So good luck and enjoy your Blender modeling.